with great pleasure i welcome you to another exciting episode of talk to be it's talk to be baby gay gay oh yes thank you guys for staying tuned thanks for the love thanks for the support you guys have been amazing i especially want to say a very big thank you to everyone that has come to support either of our guests we are grateful for the love for the support we say thank you it's been amazing i don't just come out to tell how much of help you guys have been so that i won't um abuse the privilege and then i won't um make people see it as an avenue to beg for money beg for funds all the time but i know one of the reasons we are here is to be able to help the people that are in need of it thank you so much you guys are wonderful god bless you all my name is dr abiola adebayo akimide and today is not going to be different because you're going to learn a whole lot see sometimes when you hear some people's stories it seems so unbelievable and it's like especially when they're in movies you feel oh no it's not possible but yet it is possible and such is the story that we have today i have my guest in the house but before i introduce my guest i'll go for a break please if you are yet to subscribe to this channel kindly subscribe to biola bio ent and of course you can follow me on facebook as a biola ayomide at the bio do not go away i'll be right back talk to be share your experience all right guys thank you for staying tuned on the show the program is talk to be all right and of course on this episode i have um someone with an amazing story please please i'm begging you before you hear a story relax hear it with an open mind because when i heard a story i personally felt that uh, how i felt mm -mm. it's unbelievable to an extent but you know me i will not bring you frictions as true life story so i ask i have to confirm your story and i made a call through to um someone who is like a grandmother our aunties sort of so to confirm the story that someone told us the story and she said this this is this and then the woman narrated the story to me all over in fact it was a I, through the phone i didn't record at first i had to call back again so that i could confirm the story before bringing it to you so please join me I, I i have to tell you this i had to let you know prepare your mind um so that you will listen to the story with an open mind and then you won't be saying lie lie is not it is possible if it has never happened to you or if it did not happen to you it has happened to someone somewhere so please sit back relax enjoy this episode and learn from it all right let's meet my guests together how are you doing today good morning i'm fine thank you ma. um it's a pleasure to have you on the show i'm so happy to be here tonight. thanks for coming all right um let's meet you introduce yourself what you do if you sell stuff tell people so they can patronize you especially because you are not hiding your face so please Tell us about yourself and go straight to your story. My name is Doluwa Anemi Fagbimi Esther. I'm 21 years old. Um, I learned fashion designing, but I'm not fully into it because I need to also for myself, like one way or the other. And the way I find myself, they don't really um give us work that really bring out more money. So I need to go out and look for um, a salary and a job so okay. I can get money and take care of myself. Okay. And now I'm currently running on my school stuff. I got admission last year, November, into Federal Polytechnic of Ilaru. And I'm still working towards it because I'm even thinking of dropping out already. Okay. Because I couldn't afford my school fees yet. And exam is around the corner already. So I just hope 
Thirty two point five zero. All right. So you are a student. Yes. All right. Let's go straight to your story. Um. Most people don't believe this story actually, but as okay. you have said that if it hasn't happened to you, you won't believe it. Actually, then I was going to four. I think I was. I was four, going four years old. Yeah, it's going to four years old, and my mom work in one of these companies around. We stay at Ogolonto. At Ikorodu, yes. And we're not, let me not, we're not poor, but we are okay because I attend one of the expensive school around, around that, that area at that time. And my mom will always try her best just to make me happy because I'm the only child. And my dad, he had, he had um, all this Mazda that they use a lot of these kids. Okay. I think he had like three. Mazda car. Yes, okay. that he gave out to people to work for him. So I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. And most of the um, responsibilities, my mom take most of it. He hardly attend to things that has to do with himself. So, and my mom used to say something that she will never allow me to go stay with anybody or go and live with anybody. That God should just be alive so she can take care of me. But one day, my mom was not around, she went to work. I came back from school. I think we just vacated and my daddy was like, you are going to somewhere. I was like, wait, my mom is not telling me I'm going anywhere. He said, I questioned him a lot that we're going to somewhere. So he took me with him. We went to one of his relatives at Ibadan. Okay. He told me I'll be staying, I'll be spending my holiday here. And I was like, my mom is not aware. Why will I stay here? I cannot stay here. And the man was like, you will stay here, nothing will happen. I'm your dad, elder sister, and nothing will happen. I'll take care of you. Okay, fine. I had to stay. But your mama treated me. A girl of going to four years old, and she asked me to wash all the old plates in the house, including the one that is dirty and the one that is not dirty. I will have to wash them. Around four At o'clock. Four. Yes. They will wake me up around four in the morning, pack all the old plates out, and ask me to wash. And after that, I will follow her to her shop. She sells all this food stuff that all these Igbo people sell. I forgot to say, my dad is an Igbo man. Okay. So, your mom? My dad. What about your mom? My mom is an Igbo woman. Okay. She's from Moyo, but I don't know my dad's state. So I'll go to the shop, help her and all that. But yet, the mama treats me a lot. At times, she'll not give me food from morning to like two o'clock. She has one daughter. That one really likes me a lot. And the lady will be like, what has this girl done to you? Why are you treating her this way? She'll be like, and if I'm not treating her nice, then you can take her and treat her well. So one of these days, my the lady, she had to call my mom that this girl is going through a lot. Why do you have to leave your child to come here? And I was like, she's not even away. That every day she asked my dad, where is this girl? Eh, oh Lord, she'll be she'll be back soon. And she oh, can't agree. Hold on, I'm sorry to cut in. I don't understand that part that your mom allowed your dad to take you to his older sister before age four. How many were you? And why did she allow it in the first She was not around. I told you she went to work. My dad came back and he was like, I'm going somewhere with him. I was like, Mom didn't tell me anything like that. He said I have to go. That I question him a lot. Just took me there. And I think... Was that for a day? No. I had to go and spend the holiday day. Okay, was so, for the holiday period? Yes. Okay, you didn't, you didn't tell her. So that. when the lady called my mom, was like, she has been worried, sir, but she can't argue a lot with him. Okay. Because he won't listen. So the lady was like, she will plan how they will pack my things and my mom should be at Ibadan a day before. Okay. So... In the morning, as usual, I used to wash the plates. They would just pack my things with it and she would just take me along with her. So that night, I couldn't even stay because I was very, very anxious that I couldn't stay here again. Mm. So we left Ibadan the next day. My mom was very, very angry and she was like, why will you do so? I told her everything that happened. So she apologized. So later on, the only thing I noticed is that anytime my dad and my mom had arguments, my dad would tell her that in my shape, my angel come. He and was telling her in Yoruba. Yes. So we went to my grandpa's place one day and I told my grandpa that my dad used to say something that I mean my shake my joke to my mom. My grandpa was like, kill her for baby pay on Loshima by the two and solo jumbo. So my dad my grandpa had to invite him over and he talked to the both of them and they said to this. He just he said it's just out of annoyance and that's all. So on this Facebook day that this thing's going to happen. That happens that in the night, I wasn't feel comfortable. 
I told my mom that I'm not feeling too comfortable. That we should go to the church. Because then we stayed in a bus quarter. We stayed with my uncle. We stayed close to each other. So I think his room is the first. Then after then, our room is the third room. He, ha um, he has his own church outside the compound. So we should attend this church. So I told my mom that I should go to the church and go and sleep. And she was like, why would we, why are we going to leave our room and go to the church, the church that no, that no program is going on in the church? Why do I, I said, I don't feel like sleeping in the house. She said, what did I know? We are going to sleep and all that. She pet me, we played and all that. So then we go inside. So later on, we were watching a movie. And in that movie, we saw an old woman. The man was holding a black pot. And I was like, ah, what is this useful? My mom was like, I ask questions a lot. That eh, at times, they use it for sacrifice and all that. She explained a lot of things about it. And yet, I wasn't feeling too good. I was just moving around that. And I was saying, ah, can we just go somewhere in this night? She said, no, that there's no way I'm going to. It's late already. So that night, I think it was around, I think it was late in the night and she was like, I need to go and sleep, that she wants to sleep also, that she wants the TV and the light. I love the TV, I love everything, but I don't feel like sleeping because I wasn't feeling comfortable. She's already sleeping already. Then I had full step in our window because at times that used to come back very late mm -hmm. in the night. Okay. So that day, I, I knew he was the one. I was not like, ah, thank God he's even now. Maybe we'll be able to talk or all that. So when he came inside, he woke me up and took me outside to the backyard. That backyard, we have one um, camp, camp that man that worked there. So he took me to that man's workshop and he asked me to stay there and wait for him. And I was like, why? Is it already? He said I should wait when that is coming. I stood there. He went, he went away. I stood there a lot and I was like, I am not seeing this man. What was wrong? And my mom was inside like sleeping. I just saw a cat. I had to run back inside her. I cannot stay here again. So I had to sleep beside her. I was not comfortable. I was very, very scared. I knew something was going to happen. And I woke my mom. She was just like, let me do this girl. What was wrong? Let me sleep. She pets me again and she slept off. So later on, my dad came back. He came back this time around with a tobacco bag. So I felt maybe he bought something for me. And I was like, let this man sleep. I was just going to check what he bought and all that. So I noticed he moved towards me and he was waving his hand like this. To see if he was sleeping. If I was sleeping, yes. And I wasn't sleeping. He did the same thing to my mom. But she, she's sleeping already. And later I went back to the tobacco bag. He brought out a black pot. Then I was very, very scared. Because I, I knew something is wrong somewhere. He brought out a black pot and a knife. At the end of the knife, it was tied with a red cloth. I was scared. I wanted to move. My body was not moving. Hmm. I wanted to talk, but I could not hear myself talk. So I had to watch and see what was going to happen. He never knew I was awake because I'm very sure that he even knew I was awake. I will not live to tell the story. Hmm. So he brought out the pot and I was like, what was, what was going to happen in this place? He went to the bed, he took one of the pillow and he was heading straight to my mom's place. I was like, what was going to happen? I wanted to stand up. Maybe I could help her, please, but my body, is not, my body is not moving at all. I couldn't even move my body. So I had to wait. She took the pot, he took the pot and the knife and went to her and slaughtered her neck. Jesus. <laughs> he slaughtered her neck and collected her blood Hold inside. On. Your dad slaughtered your mom's neck. Yes. Inside the room. Yes. And you were there. Yes. I was watching him. I couldn't do anything. But he thought you were sleeping. Yes, he thought I was sleeping. He slaughtered her and collected the blood inside the inside the pot. Jane, I knew everything is not right again. And I couldn't do anything. He just back up everything, cover her face with the wrapper that she was sleeping with and left. It was like let's say like ten minutes after or thirty minutes after I was able to stand up. I called my mom, I woke her up, then I was blood was already flowing. I had to rush outside to my uncle's room to call him. So when I called him, he was like, what was I said? My mom, something is wrong with her. He said, well, I said he should just come. So once again, he was like, what happened? This story, people that are familiar with this will know it's a real life story because my grandpa is, is one of, is the chairman. 
for all these people that go on paper and all those of at my 12 markets so they are aware of the story because everybody were surprised and when i called my uncle my uncle went to the room at that time blood was already flowing so he just has to send me outside and i was like there's no point in sending me outside everything happened right in front of me so before we know it people had gathered in our house and they were like what happened so the next in the morning the police were around already even this tv i think on tv or tvc they at carried that news at that time even labe on this man that did that used to do all this Kola, Ola, we, yeah. yes he carried the story at that time so what uh, year was that place if you uh, remember i think that should be like 17 years ago around 17 years ago yes so 17 years ago should be around 2007 yes, yes. 2007 yes okay so when the police were there, when they were around they asked that what happened and all that and people were like they should ask me because i was there so i told them but they didn't believe they were like i'm too small mm. to say this kind of thing i told them it happened right in front of me i'm very sure this story if i wasn't there my family would have they would have told me something different entirely because they don't want to make me feel bad that my dad killed my mom but because i was there they had no choice so when they were i told them and i told everything to the police officer and they were like where is he i told them immediately he left i didn't know where he went so so we we're still on the case he came back in the morning he came back himself. yes himself in the morning he was sitting on white was it the one that came or they went to pick him because he came back himself okay he came back himself nobody called nobody went to pick him he came back himself in the morning and he was sitting on white white singlet white trouser and he was standing right in front of me i was like eh because he used to call me i have a bunny in kitchen in kitchen where is your mommy i said my mommy is inside and he was like what happened what, why are people around you he said i don't know i don't know what's going on i told the police of that that is him arrest him before you go and he was like this guy is so small arrest him for what what did he do i told him you killed my mom right he said no how did I know? Um, I'm too small. Why do I have to believe me? I know that. I told them, if this man should run away, I won't take it like he killed my mom, arrest him. So they arrested him and we all went to the police station. I can't remember that position at that time because I can't remember again. So when they, I, I will tell the story again to the DPO. The man was like, this guy is too small for all this thing that he's saying. The policeman, they had to got, um, contribute money and give it to me that at this age, I could say this kind of thing. I was like, it happened right in front of me, so there's nothing to hide. It was still like, no, this girl is too young. You don't have to believe her. What if she's lying? I told him, I'm not lying. I saw you. You came you came in the first time. You took me outside and you went back. You came back again before you did what you wanted to do. And I was like, eh, he's not the one. Maybe I'm, I'm mixing it up. I said, no. I know my dad. And he was like, eh. At that time, he couldn't say anything again. His family member were around. And they're like, and hey, their child cannot do that kind of thing. He cannot even know they fly. I said, this one had to kill his wife. So there is no point in, there is nothing like maybe somebody is lying or anything. It happened right for, and I'm the child. And since that time, I have it in mind that I'm not his child anymore. I used to tell my grandmother, I'm staying with her. He killed his child already, and that is my mom. So you shouldn't think maybe he has no child anyway. No, it's not possible. So after then, we went to Kirikiri. Yes, the case led to Kirikiri. And they were still postponing the case and all that. I think I could remember one time they called my grandpa that he ran mad already. I think that was around two weeks, two weeks in Tava. So that this man knew something like that. My grandpa was like, ah, God is already taking his judgment. That's so they should wash him closely, if truly. Is mad. Then they should free he him. He ran mad in the prison. Yes. That they should free him. He has nothing to do again. So, after then, I think they released him. I don't know. Maybe the maybe he wasn't really mad. I, I'm not sure. But they released him. You know how these are Nigeria police officers can be. I don't know how they scattered the old case and all that. But we just know he was released. So, I used to tell people when I was young that my dad was killed by a reality. He wasn't killed by a reality, but I used to tell people that I don't have parents anymore. 
for someone to kill his wife, then him too should be killed. But since the government could not give me the judgment I want, I step that he's dead already. And I think a few years ago, maybe three years or two years ago, my grandpa died last year. So then he was still Your alive. Matana yes. Grandpa. I didn't know any of my dad's family, family. at all. None of them asked of me. I didn't ask of them either. Because when this then happened, one of them said he wants to take me along. And my mom's family was like, no, I can't go with any of them. That's not possible. That is not possible. So since then, I didn't know any, Nobody asked of me. I didn't ask of them too. I'm even using my mom's son name. I'm not using his son because I don't know his name. I, I can't remember anything about him. And I don't want to remember. So after then, my my grandpa was like, I shouldn't tell people that he's dead. I was like, he's dead already. What's the point? Someone that killed someone should be killed. Since they didn't kill him, to me, oh, he's dead. So I think two years or three years ago, I had I went to my uncle's place, that pastor that I said we okay. together. He went to his place and asked of me. And I was told that he told him to go to my grandpa's place to ask of me. I won't lie. I... Because I'm very, very, I used to talk a lot. I'm very, very free if I want to express myself. I called my uncle, I cursed him, I, I talk, I said a lot of things that I'm not supposed to say. Sir. That what if he was in my shoe? Will he pray that? Someone that you should have arrested the moment you saw him. So you now tell him to go to my grandpa's place to ask of me. For what? As his child or, or what? I don't understand. I was very, very mad at him. And my grandpa said he came to his side and he was like, where is so so person? My father was like, What do you want again? You killed my child and I see asking of a daughter. It's not possible. And my grandpa could not stand up. So it was very, very weird at that time. Before he could call people, he has already left. So when people came, he was like, Ah, Baba Esther alone lawyer. So they ran out of time, but they couldn't get they didn't him. Get him. Yes. So that was all I could hear about him since that time. I didn't hear anything about him again. I still have it in mind. Enter my scene because I can't really recognize him again. But once I could wash him closely, I, I still have the picture of what he looks like then. Okay. So I still have it in mind that if God should bless me, I will still get him arrested and he will be sentenced to death. Because anybody that kills someone should be killed. I don't believe, I don't see reason why they should let him go scot free. No. <sighs> but why was he released? what happened what happened to your mother's family members is it that they didn't follow through the case they didn't watch it closely what were they told they only came to tell you that he ran mad and so when people run mad in the prison do they release them to go what really happened that is what i don't understand too because at that time we have one uh, let me call him a grandpa that man yeah he loved to like follow Kelly, follow case closely. Okay. Like anything that has to do with case, you'll be like, ah, I'm a decor to any. Along that during that time that this that happened, anytime I this, you say, cause he's go, yeah, oh, I look out to allow you your job, bye, sugar. I'll be like, okay, sir, because I used to follow them then. And I don't know all of a sudden everything just went off like that. Cause then my grandpa could not, he, he could not even go with us, cause he was in the agony, hmm. like he lost a child. So, and most people said they were not really concentrating on the case. Let me put it that way. They were only concerned about my grandpa and me, myself. Because hmm. then, even me, I thought everything was going to end. Because it was like taking someone that... Because I look like my mom a lot. Hmm. I look like her a lot. So, it was like taking someone that is so close to me. I don't move close to my family member. It's not like um, anything. But my mom just don't like it. She prefer me being with her alone. She used to say that... Uh, Mommy, like where the family could come, no mm. matter what. Not knowing that she won't even take care of me to the extent that she wants to. Cause then I even used to disturb that mom. I want maybe a junior star, a brother. She be like, but what's it all going to do? My friend from Labu, I can relax you. So not knowing that I'll still even I'll be the only one at the end of it all. So I think they were they were not giving the case full attention. That was why it went that way. Cause I did been. They were following the case and everything. Even when we were called the Irama, they should have go there and confirm it themselves. Because mm -hmm. someone that I said Irama, and he asked could come back and ask of me again. Ah, it's even it looks so mad to me. When I was called that, he came to ask of me. I said, "Entotiyari, totiku." Because me, I believe he's dead. 
My papa was like, oh wow, oh baby, oh baby me for what? Hmm. Um, so, for you, um, how has it been now? Who has been taking care of you? Then, how did you go to school? Um, after the incident, my grandpa was like, who will I stay with? And then, because my grandpa has two wives. So, my mom's, um, my mom's mom, she's the second wife, and there okay. were just three. Okay. Two boys and a girl. So, my mom is in between. Okay. And my uncle, that's her elder brother, mm. he was like, he's going to take me to Abuja. My grandma was like, and my, grandpa, my grandpa was like, no. Oh, Tim, Mary. To buy mom or ill. To buy the boy, Mary, to have my dad lying what he's away. That no, that he's not going to allow that. So, the grandma I'm staying with is my grandpa's junior sister. Grandpa. His junior yes. sister. Okay. My okay. dad's mom. I'm staying with her junior sister. Okay. So and he was like the only person he could release me to. Your he... mom's dad. Yes. Your mom's My dad. My mom's dad, uh -huh. yes. Okay. I'm staying with her junior sister. Okay. That is this woman. Because at least she's old enough and she can take care of me. And she mm -hmm. was like, Ah, I will care about my mom or you know. And she accepted. And she was like, Talk about the farm or talk. So I think when she um took me to her side, I think the first year it was very, very tough. Because anytime like this, I would just sleep and I would scream for my dream. My mommy, my mommy. And I would be sweating. Because at at some point I dreamt that we were, in, we were together in a bus. And she was like, she was telling me that this life it is full of good and bad. And she was advising me. And all of a sudden she was like, Mwen KJ, I'm going to stop at this bus stop. Once you mm. get to the other bus stop, just be following, just be going with the bus. Once you get to where you stop, you stop. I was like, Mom, why are you going to say you want to get something for me? So that day, I was very, very scared. I had to scream from the gym again. So that time, Gemma was really, really scared that what was going on. And one day, we were watching movie in the house. All of a sudden, everything was just scattering. Even the TV had to go off. And there was this breeze, every breeze. And Gemma was like, Toi, to ba fe fun mi lo mo yi to. Wa fun mi to. Emi ko ni mo pa o, o re ni mo she. And my grandma was like, cause she doesn't know. All the uh, since the day I moved to her place, is the grandma that you're still with now? Yes, till now. Okay, she was the one I called. Yes, she was the one. You okay, called. I'm thinking we should. Is it okay to call her? Yes. To put her on speaker yes. and let people hear yes, the story for my her. again. Yes. All right, please. Um. I'll be right back while I get my phone to call a grandma on the show. At least I've heard it before. Let's hear it again. Talk to be. Talk to be. Share your experience. Thank you for staying tuned. In case you're just joining us, you're watching Talk to Be. All right, so I'm about to call um, Esther's grandmother. Um, she's an auntie actually, but more of a grandmother as a Yoruba person. So let's go. Uh, okay. So, hello, hello, ma. Hello. Hello, ma. Eka, so ma. Eka, ma. Um, yes, ma. I be Eka, Roma. I be all alone, sorrow. That's that to be talk, talk to be, ma. Okay, ma. Okay, ma. Yes, I'm not going to join you. 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 i Okay. Okay, 
Esa, on a si ma mè, ma mè, ti di shè de lò jò yin. Wà jò shere, ba bè nò an ban dè, wà jò shere. Lè tà nà bè wà fi si lè, lò fi wà si lè jà di. Yà yè 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 wè, pè lè, on wà son, on kòti mò mò tò dà mi lò jò nè mò sò yè. Yè yè wè, on wà son, pè lò on mè. On bà tò di yò wà o rù, di a gòn e di la, di ba bè shè wà lè jè nè yè. Bò dè shè wà lè, o bè, Bako obdake kwa, obwe, obwe kwa sinu ya di kukududu, obwe sinu ya. Bo shi wa kaya si yon manye, kwe bo yon sun a di yon sun. To di kwe bo yon man si sun yon jen sun wala. Bo shi mo yon manye yon. O kwa kwa mwanda si di di katin takan, ni wajou li yon be. Ngo ya, o sha mo yon be, o fi ba yon be, o fi sun yon ba ou be yon. To, o manye wa ki di, Ou a lò ba, e bò yè sò lò yè ba e jè ma. Ma? Ou ba e jè, ou dù mwè. Ou dù mwè ni, ou dù mwè ni. Ou a gba si nò, kà la ba, ou sa gbe lò. Ou ma yè sa, ou a mò ma si di kè mò wà kà da wè li lò mò wà li pè, yà mò ma, a bù lò ba te wà lò li bè di. Mi gà ti sè lè yè sè lè. So, I'm going to go back and go 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 and Okay. I don't want to buy a last one. Oh, okay. Baba, Baba, I have a first one. Last one. Okay. So, I don't want to buy a last one. Baba, Baba, I have a last one. 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 Baba, Et bien, il y a un stade dans le monde, c'est que vous avez dit 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 que vous avez Kuma baba baba kodi yesa ibalo wa sayi pe o o fe ki o wa do do awon egbon ababuru e koko ayo egbon ya ababuru e koko pe emi ti mo je abura awon ni ki ma mo lo sojo ati odun merin yen mo ti gbawo ti ti do ni le tin toju e bai ati odun merin kekere to ti wa yen mo ti gbawo ti ti do ni da se ta ma so ni na re pe to ba se ri baba awon Tu mba shiri wun shi ma kwa lo kwa mwun. Kwa shi ma kwa nan li kwa lo kwa lo kwa ya wun. She e yi ro kwe babe e shi wala yi vay. Ah, mi ne shon kwa kwa ni kwa 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 yi mwun. To li ba tu wwa ti mwun lwa yi mwun kwa ni ba kwa 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 ti tu shi le. E ni o ne shon kwa kwa li kwa sa to di yu kwe. Ola yi sta yi sti 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 Mi gba yen, mo ka lò di yon kò mò yè sa yè, a ti gba yen, o mò yè gò yè kò ti bè si mò mi. Mò lò di pè, mò kò tò shè lè, fò mò mò kò lò shè tè yè ti mè, kò tè mi lò. Hmm. O da ma, e shè, e shè a di pè, la gba rò lò yè shò mò a di nò fò mò yè yè o. E ni, shè la sò nò lò yè sa. La gbaro, a te yi ti, a wu te e bi nan, o lò mwa jek e jè e lò gò bò mò. Wè lò gò lò, e sta a ta mwa to kò mwa yon wà yon yon jè fò yi. La gbaro lò, e wà ni gò rà yi son jè e wò mò. Gò bò mò, an te e n tò rò, lò lò yi wò, o lò mwa ba yi shè. La gbaro, e ni sun kò, e li da mò. Gò bò, o gò tò lò nò dè ti shè fò yi, kò ni gbe rè mò, e lò gò ni shè lè mò. La gbaro lò. E grampa e nye gongon wan kò. Ma? Grampa e nye kò. Baba, baba e nye. To jek bon yè. Baba e nye. 
So lati gba yen lati omo odun merin tester wa yen titi to fi disin yen yin le n toju e Oh, no, 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 Hello, where are you now? What school did you attend? The other time you were saying that um, uh, um, that you were in school, that you're about to tell us about. Growing up was actually a bit difficult and fun because I had to, wasn't to stay with people. Mm. And grandma has been trying because she really tried a lot. She tried a lot because there's no difference between me and our kids. And they were all grown up already before I could get to a place. Okay. So they all they everybody take care of me as their younger siblings and all that. And growing up, my mom used to say something that in court she agba on ba si she, agba on ba si ka, la on ma she. Tan ba le ti she kin ba on ba be. So my uncles they try their their best because get yeah, some points i used to feel entitled to them that they should do something for me mm. and we used to fight about it and, and i'll be like to bad money because i was young then and one of my uncle will be like mama so bad for me more space of me yato space a yato so and when i was growing up i feel like all these people if they should help me then god decided to if they didn't help me then i can't like god should have his way and since then, I don't used to see them as maybe uh, they are not helping me and they are not my enemy. No, I have one of my sister too that she has been helping a lot, and grandma has been trying get to the stage of my primary school because I attended public school through since I got to a place got a and I'm okay with it. So after um primary school, when I entered, we located to Ibafo because we're seen as Barry Garden. Okay. We located to Ibafo. And when we got to Bafo, when I wanted to enter G um, junior secondary school, she was like, hey, um, said that I should go by because they just moved to the house. Babari, mom, I could see she retired in Nepal, so I got back to Walamashi. I think I stayed for a year before I resumed back to school. Mm -hmm. We went to my grandpa, who was like then, and he would think about it and what to do. So later on, he helped a little bit, and I was able to continue with school. So the grandma used to tell me that, she more than one to dada. Agbara on be to secondary school law. Wow. And I have it in mind too that that is what she can do. Hmm. So she tried all her best. Cause then she was just selling all this petty petty stuff, and she tried to train. When I was in SS3, um, there was this foundation, Dubai Foundation. They helped too. Hmm. Cause they gave me school uniform, um, school bags and all that, and they paid for my senior work there. So after the I graduated from secondary school, I think, 2019. So after then, I know that life mm. has been to start. Because grandma is so like me, SST, and then I told her that I really want to go to school, even if it's not fully. I just want to at least let me know that I have this impact in me, that I want to go to school. 
and she was like, "Oh, I'm in law. You to buy the shoe, no push. My dear, she do well. No matter to say one thing that, but that my delay, oh my dear, Ben. So my she do well. We shall, we no shall be able to send anybody a follow. Do my uncle at times they can send me five thousand, two thousand. But Gamma has been the one day. She has been the one. At times, me too. I can bring up my attitude. Gamma will be like, oh. Cosi bito fe she si ibito wa ino ni wa kwada wa to ba o le pe yodo mi tsana wa do le oko but for now me mo she ni so and then when i finished cuz when i was in ss2 gama told him that i she o lo fe ko i said i don't know ma ah o le wa do mi ko ma ko she o to bi to ba lo to ba bo i she o we o le to je so then i learned fashion design but I'm not fully into that work because I didn't have time to practice it myself. I graduated from the work, but it's just like I learned from all this Taylor Mitchell band. The man is not really deep into Good the enough. Fashion okay, design. so would you still want yes, to? Yes, I still yeah. wish to because my plan was to go to school, just end it. Once I'm done with my end, my end it too. The remaining two years that I will use for a change, I should just go to fashion school okay. and go and go deep in it because I really want to. Okay. But now at this point, cause last year I work at a supermarket, much pharmacy at Aripo side, that our side, for like less like ten months. I was able to gather some money, and with the help of my sister, got certified. Been she has been trying to. So when I get admission, we were able to pay acceptance fee, get accommodation and all that. And then there wasn't money anymore. That money that I felt that I have saved, I have money. So then I was like, so how much was it enough? <laughs> So, and our exam, I think, is on the 29th of this month. I'm thinking of dropping out already because I couldn't afford 180,000 for school fees. <sighs> My plan was to um, offer part time and I'll be able to work at the time, but the timetable didn't even give me that time at all. There's no time to get any work. And the fashion design that I said I learned, Ilaro, people that I met, they were like, I need to buy I found out after 700, I'm in 1,000. How am I supposed to go about that one? So I'm just thinking of cutting off school already. Even grandma has made the one just What tell me. do you need now? Ah, oh, I need, I just need, if I could get my education, like someone to sponsor, or maybe I just get up around it. Just to just make this ND level. Education. Yes. And then, and then I go further into my fashion design and stuff. Esther, with the incident that happened to you, how do you perceive men? Let me say when I was growing up, I had this motive that all men are the same. Mm. Yes. Even when it got to some stage that I hardly talked to male friends, like when I was in school, and the mom would be like, everybody will be back or no. Mm. I'll be like, no. I'll be like, no. So far, he can do something like that to his own wife that gave, that gave him a child. Then other men are not, are not different. So it has to go to some stage that my grandpa had to call me. Hmm. And they have to advise me that she be by she really me. She said no. Okay. So he said people are not the same. I shouldn't see it from the way my dad is. You see it as if it happens like that sometimes. And when I was going up, my mom used to talk to me because we talk a lot. You think we're of the same age, and she'd be like, everybody are not the same. You see bad people, you see good people. Hmm. So I think that's what is changing my. Mindset, yes. Hmm. But before, I used to believe everybody, all the all the men are the same. All the men are the same. What has life taught you as a person? Mm. And what would you like people to learn from your story? Yeah, life has taught me to be to be strong, and I see the way whatever comes your way, just face it. Hmm. Just face it, cause you get some stage. I'll be like, maybe me should me too, I should just die and go and meet my mom. Mm. Nobody Gamma is not treating me bad though. But maybe I just sit down with her and start thinking about how everything happened. And I'll just be like, what am I even living for? But go something I'm like, I I want to like I want people to be able to remember my story and be like, ah no, so I'm more easy to buy. Mm. So I had to stop all the most. I had to just be strong for myself. At times I will cry and I'll be like, Tell me it is real. I'll still pet myself that it is real. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. 
Even when we went to my grandpa's graveyard, I saw my mom's graveyard again. I was like, mom, it's still fresh, but mm. there's nothing I can do. I have to be strong for you. So that even wherever you are, if you can see me, you will be happy. Mm. That's the one that, I mean, more me, but I want to be more than holding me in this world mm. for her. For her. Oh, wow. I love that. So if you're talking to younger girls, how do you encourage them? What do you tell them? I do. I remember last time I left a baby. I went to an orphanage home. Mm. I went there to give him so. So I told those girls I needed that this life, things happen. Because if someone should tell me that I will leave my mom's side for a day, I won't believe it. Mm. So and when it happens, it looks rough, but I had to face it. Mm. It's not easy, but you just have to keep encouraging yourself. And once you see people that are there for you, to that are trying to make you happy. Don't try to be an English. Well, get something. Mm. I will be like, my feet be so new. Mm. I love that. So don't try to be an English. Anytime I want to do something, I used to think about grammar first. Wow. Because I'll be like, yeah, it is. When, because guess what? We had argument that last year. And I wanted to leave her side to go and work. And she was like, ah, you will feel like you can come back with I had to work on myself. Anyway, I got out with my mom. And she was like, yeah, she was like, see, I got out with the only thing to my mom that I used to remember about her is when I could not even do things myself, she was there for me. So I don't want to be an ingrid to her. Mm. So I used to tell people that even when you feel like everything is looking rough or so, just be strong for the people that love you. Just for the people that love you. The people that are looking up to you. Because I see how my junior was like grandma's grandchildren. I'll be like, auntie, auntie, Esther, they are glowing. I'll be like, oh. These girls don't be like me, just be like yourself. Because hmm, even people, you cannot even see half of what I've seen, and you'll be able to be strong like this. No, it's just grammar and God. Let me just say, because grammar usually, the only thing, oh, my name is Lolly Babala, oh, 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 and that made me strong a lot. God bless her. Yeah. I know there will be a lot of misconception because your dad um, is an. Ibo man and your mom Juruba and that happened to you. How do you perceive the Igbo people? Mm, when I was growing up, I used to have this motive that I can't have anything to do with anybody that is Igbo. Because hmm. I used to see them as a killer, a murderer. Wow. Yes, I used to believe that. And Gama used to tell me once that Mafe Igbo. Gama used to say it. That go go do in the mood, but me feel it because it costs off me. One or two, you already. So to me, now I have Igbo friends, so, but I'm still not always comfortable around them. So I don't have closer relationship with them because I still believe that most of them they have the same thing. That's the way I see them. I won't lie. I even say that I can't have a closer relationship with Igbo. No. Nothing like that. Maybe a distance relationship will be that same and that's all. All right, Esther, I would like to correct um your mindset or the your views about the Igbo people. Igbos are good people, Yorubas are good people, the houses are good people. We are all good people. People just choose to be bad. Among your family members, it's not all of them that are very good. Yeah. Is it your family that is bad? Because one person chooses to be bad does not mean every other person is bad. I've met a lot of good Igbo people. I've met a lot of Aussas that are very good and Yorubas. And of course, there are Yorubas that are bad very bad doesn't mean i'm a bad person doesn't mean you're a bad person so please always relate with people based on themselves based on what they make you believe or not about where they are from and also men are not the same because one person because a car is bad does not mean you are not going to drive the car again i'm just trying to prepare your mind because i know you're going to get married by god's grace to a very good man an handsome man the man of your dream please so that you will not have that at the back of your mind that oh this man can wake up one day to slaughter me god forbid 
Do you understand me? All right, guys. Um, like I said from the beginning of the story, that um, from the beginning of this episode, I know that a lot of you have so many questions in your heart. And that was one of the reasons I made sure that we called a grandmother and put her on the line. Because before you start saying, ah, it's not real, it's not possible. Four years before, I, I, I said that, I ask. In fact, I've answered the question you would ask me, you know. But you see, this is Esther. Like you always do it on this show, I know I'm not alone on this. Um, I need help. I need. Um, I know we have some therapists that want to. So I need if you're a good therapist there. In fact, not for only Esther. I know for the show we we'll need permanent um therapists. We we'll need counselors. We we'll need um health workers. We we'll need um um police solicitors and all of that so that they can be able to help us with our guests our clients you know please guys i know you guys have been supportive there is nobody that we have brought here that has not received something no matter how small so please this is esther so that she can live her dreams so that she can become what she had always wanted to become Nobody prayed for that kind of incident. Nobody prayed to be, nobody's praying to, to be in her shoes. But unfortunately, she has found herself there. What do we do? How do we help? I, I know how we do it. Just send me um, a DM on our official page at talk to be 5000 on Instagram. We also have... Um, a what's it called um whatsapp you can chat us up don't bother to call just chat us up and ask for um esther's contact or uh account details preferably account details so that we can help her and if you know you want to sponsor you want to be in her life preferably women please women who are ready to support her don't worry you you can always get across to her through me thank you so much guys esther thank you for coming to share your story thank with you. us i want to tell you um the god that shut your mouth from talking the god from i mean that night that your dad was in the act the god that shut your mouth when your dad was doing what he was doing with your mom that didn't allow you to cry out. The one who gave you wisdom that made a four years old girl to remember all this, to be able to fight and say, oh, this is my dad. Hold him, hold him, don't let him go. The God that has kept you from that time till now, you, you speak well, you're beautiful. That God is able to keep you beyond now. I want you to know that you are more than a conqueror. You are a champion. You can be everything that God has called you to be. I'll tell you what. God will uphold you. He's yeah. upholding you already. You will go to that school. You will do well. You will excel as a fashion designer. Amen. You will do very well by God's grace. All I just need you to do is just stay focused. And then let your dad be. Of course, if he comes back, the law should take its course. That is how he's been. God is aware of it. He will fight for you. Okay? Don't um, put your mind to vengeance so that you will not bleed on other people or other men do you understand let him go let him go if you see him today i'm not saying don't get him arrested of course let him go and you do you understand yes. but for you keep your head high be determined at whatever you want to do whatever we are able to get from this um, uh, um show of course you will get to see it and everything i pray that this will be a point of a change of story for you. Mm -hmm. It will be a point of a major break 
through for you. Mm-hmm. It will be a point of great success. Mm-hmm. God will rewrite your story for mm-hmm. good. It will make you forget the pains of the past. Mm-hmm. Whatever you have at the back of your mind, start erasing them for evil. And know that people are different. Your father just choose to be what he has been. There are still good men out there. There are still great fathers out there. And I pray that God will bless you, bless the work of your hands. Amen. God will enable you. Amen. He will give you more wisdom. Amen. By God's grace, wherever the sole of your feet will step, you will possess. Amen. You will never go down. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Ma. Um, for coming, this small gift is from all of us thank to you. you to say thank, thank you, you for coming. We love and thank appreciate you. you. And don't worry, we are with you mm-hmm. in this journey. All right, guys. Um, I'd like to say thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. And then if you have a story out there, you want to share your story with the world, please just reach out to us on um on Instagram at, at talk to be 5000 or the whatsapp number on the screen please stop calling to beg for money we all need money please i beg you it's only for serious people that have a story to tell and please put it at the back of your mind we screen stories we don't just bring them here so if you tell us your story and we're not convinced about it or we feel it's nothing that we want to share i'm sorry we won't be able to share it please so that you will not be disappointed we don't approve all stories so when you tell us your stories we have the team that go through it we screen them and then we pick out the good ones that we want to share or the believable ones if you have a way of confirming it we'll confirm it please please stop sending messages as it is not a platform to beg for money yes we help people but we help people with genuine story we are not going to encourage mediocrity we are not going to encourage laziness if you need money please work and get the money please these people that are giving to they are giving it because they've been able to work and get money god bless you all thank you for watching do not forget in whatever thing you're doing put god first be determined and stay focused i remain your host dr aviola adibayo akinide till i come your way same time next week on the same station god bless you bye talk to be, talk to be. share your experience